Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and at this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at images and loading in images and a little bit about the history behind all that. Let's go take a look at an example. This is an image that's loaded on the screen, and when uh, this whole thing is the canvas, this uh, light bit here is the canvas, and this is a bitmap that is loaded on the screen. The canvas is all one picture, and a bitmap is a way that we can add to that one big picture. See, if we right click anywhere, if we could view the image or save the image, and it doesn't really matter. All this is one big picture. So we're working a little bit differently than in HTML and H, well, we are in HTML, the canvas tag, all of this tag right here is HTML. This on the, on the left hand side, this is a view page source here, that's not part of the image. So this is the Zim frame and the canvas tag here, this, and that reduces down like so, and this happens to be the fit mode. And it's fitting that proportion inside there. And then we have this bitmap right here. So in HTML, it's loaded in an image tag, and that works a little bit differently. Image tags, you know, uh, load in as the image loads. We don't have to wait for all of the images to load before we can show the page. It used to be in the dawn of HTML that an image that the rest of the page wouldn't know where to go until the image loaded in, but now uh, that that's not exactly true anymore. And we would always have to put dimensions on images, otherwise it would be a mess. But uh, these days, uh, HTML handles that. Plus, internet speeds have gotten faster, so the images are loading in. We used to have to wait for an image to load in. We could see it loading from the bottom and load up. Or was it loading from the top to the bottom? I can't remember. I think it was from the top to the bottom. Yeah, that's right. It started here and it would load down. Um, on the canvas, we, let's go into the code. We're bringing in CreateJS. And CreateJS is a series of libraries, of modules. And one of those is PreloadJS. And PreloadJS preloads images for us. And when those images are loaded, then we can start our app or do things with them. Uh, Zim came along and it wraps the the preload JS. So that's what we're using preload JS in the background, but we wrap it in an easier way to do it. We don't have to have these things called, oh, what did they call them again? Uh, I can't remember. It was a fancy term. <laughs> Ooh, so fancy, can't remember. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, it's when you have a a bunch of, not rules, but a manifest, that's it. So was it a manifest? No, maybe it wasn't a manifest, but it was something like that. <laughs> anyway, um, and it was a several step process that you had to do to load in through CreateJS. In Zim, we've made it an easy way. We can say this, we can say uh, frame dot load assets plural, like that. And then we would specify the asset, for instance, this asset right here. That's a long one. Or we could specify the asset and a path. So there's the asset, and then comma, the next parameter would be the path right there. That's a long path quite often. This is an absolute path, so we're going off somewhere far away on the internet. If it were a relative path, uh, most of the time we would just use something like assets slash like that, and that's a, a local path to the assets. So this is how we wrapped the CreateJS preload in this thing called frame.loadassets. But we would then have to wait for the asset to load, so frame.on complete like that then we could call an arrow function or a function at the time and we could use the asset with frame dot asset and we could just at that point we don't have to use the path we use only the file name dot center yay oops and since this is happening after like the frame is ready, if we put the stage.update down here, well, that stage.update might run, it would run, before the asset was loaded. So we need another stage.update here, or indeed we would probably pick that up and put it in there. 
we get rid of all that. So this is what Zim looked like in the beginning. We said, oh yeah, okay, we wait until the frame is ready, then we load our assets. When the assets are complete, we're ready to run our app. So in here, this would then load the asset if, if it were at that path, which it isn't. And we'd put all our code inside of here, and it would be, ah, oh, it's kind of too bad, end of asset load. So, or end of complete or whatever. So you see what I mean? We would start, we would start Zim with the, the one event and then have another event. And this is where we would, and it was sort of like a pain in the neck to show kids this. That's a lot of nesting of brackets and stuff like that. So we changed things up and said, all right, well, what if we put a load assets right here in the frame call? So that's what we did. We made it so that we could say var assets. We don't have to put it in a variable, but we could. And we put this stuff in here. Boop. If we have one asset, it would just be like that. Or we might have multiple assets, in which case we put them in an array. Either one would work. Same with here. We could put that in an array. And then we would put the var path. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm on an old template. All these at the moment. Well, all these at the moment would be const. So, and path is equal to, and this would be, if this indeed were the path, and then we pass those in down here. So this is the way we usually do it now, assets and path. And I would suggest we do it that way. You put any assets you want to load, including fonts and sounds and images in an array. You put them all in an assets folder, it just makes it easy. And then you pass the assets in and the path in. And what happens is the frame then preloads those as it does all this preloading for us and wraps it in with when it's ready with the canvas and stuff like that. So we don't need any of this anymore. Yay! Boop. That goes out and we would just say frame.asset. And we would put uh, this in there. It's rather a long asset name, isn't it? There is a way that you can pass in an asset object and just provide an ID for that, and that is a separate thing from the file name, and use an even shorter ID. But most of the time, we found most of the time that's like rather long. It would probably just be something like pattern, like that. And to to repeat, to repeat uh, that was really no problem here, like so. So we found it really wasn't worth it. You may as well just put the file names in there and then call the asset with the file name. That's probably easier than providing an ID and the file name, ID, file name, ID, file name, ID, file name, and using the ID down here. So uh, after a little while, there's a history of assets. We used this so much that we said, well, okay, let's get rid of the frame. And we made a global function that points to that frame. So now, you can just pass in the assets and remember if you wanted to if you had just one asset you could put that asset right there and if you had a path you could put the path right there just like you could take any of these things from the variables and stick them into there so it's a matter of loading a frame with an asset and then saying asset that and at that point we could center it on the stage dot drag it etc and we know that this asset has been loaded it's ready to use all right, so that's where we stand right now, and we put that stage.update back into the normal place. This is the recommended route of going right now, although usually I do store that as a variable and store this as a variable. By the way, uh, storing, oh, that's assets and path. Storing those are, as variables are a little bit handy. If I wanted to go and do something later, like say the allow default, which is a parameter that's way down there, or turn on or off retina, which is a parameter that's like a lot of nulls. In the current way, ES6, we can put squiggly brackets around that, and then we could go uh, retina, colon false like that. And because these variable names have the same name as the parameter names that are in behind, this works. It's the same in ES6. That's the same as saying scaling. So scaling is equal to this, what's in the scaling variable. A width is equal to what's in the width. 
And in ES6, you don't have to, if, if the property name matches your, your variable name like that, you don't have to do it. It's a little shortcut allows you to get away with that. So it's kind of handy to have the variables there because at any time we can just jump to a further parameter there. But anyway, don't worry too much about that. Um, so in other words, that works, but so does this. Now we're back to normal parameters instead of the Zim V parameters, or sorry, Zim Duo parameters. All right, uh, assets and path. Like I said, this is how we would normally do a bitmap now. And from this point on, if you're if you're making a sprite from this, if you're uh, um, other other things like we're going to show an example where we're going to make a new triangle, new triangle, and we will make it 200 by 200 by 200. And then for the color of the triangle, we're going to make a new bit map uh, color like so and we could at this point pass in this asset um, either directly copy from here and put it in there like that that would work it also manages to figure it out um, that there is an asset called that so bitmap color is smart enough to know that oh you mean, must mean the bitmap from that as a matter of fact bitmap color is really supposed to take a um, a reference to the image, the image in behind, not even the bitmap, but the, the HTML image. It's supposed to have a reference to that. So uh, that would be, in reality, would be asset like that. These round brackets do we need here? Let's just see. So if we passed in the asset, we really wanted a reference to its image property. Because the Zim the Zim bitmap has a reference to the HTML image that is that it's using, and that's what's supposed to go into the bitmap color, which is a wrapper for the CreateJS I don't know bitmap fill or something like that. <laughs> so uh, rather than make people have to say, well, actually we don't really want the bitmap, we want the image. <laughs> behind the bit <laughs> we made it figure that out automatically so you can pass just that in and also rather than have to even reference the asset we made it so that you could just pass that in if you so desire and that also works so let's see if that works so we dot center this on the stage like so oh right we've got the wrong path i don't have to like totally do this big huge undo because <laughs> <laughs> we we messed up the path of that um, the pattern in the first place. So let's just have a look at this. Uh, what we're getting at, though, is we're going to be using a bitmap color. And um, to be able to make the bitmap color work, the image needs to be there. It needs to be loaded. We can't... Uh, and, and so this is great because we are preloading the image. The frame will, will not run until the images are ready. At which point we're inside this event. When when it's ready, that means the images are ready too, and the bitmap color will work. Great. All right. So let's keep that in mind. And meanwhile, I'll mention uh, the next sort of phase, which was launched, I think, in Zimcat one, I believe, maybe even Zimcat. It might have been launched in Zimcat, where we actually don't have to preload the images. So let me show you what that looks like. We'll do a big undo here. Brrr. So where do we get to? Okay, we've got that big long one there. That's fine. All right, so we're back to where we were before, where we're not preloading the image. Look, we're no preloading going on here. We have no frame.load assets, and yet we are still able to just say asset this location. And it would be it would have been fine if, if this were if this were just pattern inside of assets. We could have gone like that, pattern.jpg. That would be most likely you're sitting with a pattern.jpg inside of assets, and it would just look like that. It could be on one line if you want. Okay. So that would actually work. Let's see it work. I'll put this whole URL back and we'll say dot center. And we will refresh our page here. Boop. There it is. So this is the page that we're looking at. And there indeed is that asset. I don't know if you noticed. Well, I can't quite notice. There's a little, a little bit of a flash. I'm not sure. What is happening here is Zim says, oh, you want this asset. 
Well, do, have we preloaded the asset? And it looks and it says, no, we have not yet preloaded this asset. Therefore, what it does is it starts to preload the asset individually. So if we had multiple assets here, it would start preloading each one individually in a, in a queue, in a sense. A queue, maybe that's what uh, CreateJS called it. Yeah, a load queue or something. We'd have to make a load queue object and we'd specify the types and then we'd apply the events to the load queue object. Anyway, um, we would make a bunch of queues in the background, one for each asset, which isn't quite as nice as queuing a bunch of assets. The reason for a queue is, hey, put, let's put a bunch of assets in there into one queue and then load it. Uh, versus let's make a low queue for this one and a queue for this one and a queue for this one and individual queues. It probably probably you won't notice it. But one thing that does matter is the fact that at this time this asset is not loaded. So we could not just say something like uh, const asset. Oh we shouldn't call it that anyway. We'll call it pattern asset is is the name of this global function. So don't name your variable asset because we would no longer have access to the global function asset. So we'll call it pattern like that. And uh, we, we saw that this works, but if we try and make our triangle, new triangle, and 200, 200, ooh, 2,200, and a new bitmap color uh, and pass in pattern or even pattern.image but if we pass in the pattern this will not work. Let's have a look. Uh, we'll dot center this and we will not center the asset which we are not doing anymore. Okay, good. So there we are. Let's have a look. We refresh here and we get the triangle but the bitmap color is supposed to be putting the bitmap in here. It's supposed to be putting that pattern in here instead of a color. And we can see that that's not coming in at the moment. Whereas if we preloaded this, shall we go through the preloading just one more time? Of our assets is equal to, well, we'll just, why don't we just do it with, yeah, okay. We'll break it up into the path as well. So that is, cool, trippy, blah, 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 and var path, and sorry, all those should be cons. I'm using an old template, the atom template, and then in here we would say assets and path. So now we're preloading it. We won't pull it from here, but instead we can just say, mm, we can either say asset and then the name of our asset, or we could just put that quotes in there. All right, so now we've preloaded it, and therefore we will be able to make the triangle with that color of our asset. So we save this, and we refresh here. And now the asset is being used. So what we've seen is, ah, okay, if we don't preload it and we just use asset, so we don't preload in here, well, we have to take all that and put it back in here. Good. If we don't preload it and we comment out this stuff, then we can't use it immediately. Can't use it. Now let's see why. So let's examine this a little bit more and see what we did in Zim to make all this stuff work. Oh, I had it right up above. So here it is right up above. We're not preloading anymore. We've got the asset with the full URL here, and we will say dot center like that, except we can't, this is so far over, we can't really see it, so let's bring that in here. So there it is, we're centering it, we'll get rid of the triangle, and just remind ourselves of where we're at now. The asset does show up, but, um, that's and that's kind of neat. That's great. That means we've got this asset, but it's it's what call what we call lazy loading. 
it's not preloading it. It's just going to load whenever it's done, it's going to show up. And we had to code that in behind. So it's like the HTML image. In an, Im in an image tag, you don't have to preload them. You just put them all on your web page. And when they show up, they show up in your web page. That's it. Same with here. Uh, we now can just say asset. And what this will do is in behind, it will say, oh, we don't have this yet. We'll preload it. And when we preload it, we'll show it. And the way we've had to handle that is that this asset is not a bitmap. Let's check it out. Uh, zog pattern dot type. And let's see what type this is. So we open this up in HTML. And zog is like our console.log. So we look in the console.log, and it's an AC object. That stands for um, asset container. So what we've done in Zim is made this thing called an asset container, which is like a, it's almost like a promise, kind of saying, hey, you're going to have this asset. We're going to put it in this container. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to center that container or uh, add things to it and a, a variety. So the centering is tricky because we actually had to wait for the asset to load, then remember that we were, we were supposed to be centering it. And once the asset loads, it knows the size and therefore it's able to center it. So um, it, it kind of centers it after, it centers it twice. It runs the center command and the center command says, well, wait a minute, I don't know what I'm centering yet. Oh, this is an asset container. Wait, I can't center it yet. Uh, I'll have to wait until it's loaded, and then I'll center it. And that's there's a whole bunch of things that it has to do like that. So you just gotta. It, we made it easier, but on the other hand, it can't. It, it's a little bit trickier in behind, a little bit more dangerous to use. And th some things like a sprite, it doesn't quite work with. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing lazy load. I would recommend that you pass in the assets as parameters here. And the bitmap fill is another example. We can't set the fill to the bitmap because the bitmap hasn't loaded yet. If you wanted to, you could wait to find out if this is loaded. And the way we do that is with an event. We would say pattern dot on complete. When this is complete, we will call this arrow function right here. And at that point, we can um, ask, it's interesting, we ask what is zog pattern.type. Well, we'll do the same thing here. So there we are doing it when it's first loaded, and here we are doing it when the pattern is complete. Okay, let's have a look. Let me refresh here. At the beginning, it was an asset container. Once the image is placed in there, once the bitmap is placed in that container, we call that an image object. So that's a Zim image object of type image. Okay, so initially it's just a container, an asset container. When the image is loaded into it, we rename it, uh, retype it to uh, an image object. And then watch this, dot type dot uh, bitmap. So if we ask for the bitmap that is inside the image container, then here's what we get. Did I ask for the type? Oh, sorry. Now we're asking for the patterns bitmaps type, and that will tell us, just copy this. So in one case, we're asking for the patterns type, and then we're asking for the bitmap properties type. And we refresh here. So it starts off as an asset container. Once it's loaded in, it's an image object. And that image object remains a container. We don't want to remove that container and replace it with the bitmap because we might have a drag on it or say, you know, there's there might be stuff put on it. And then the asset loads into the container. We can't just delete that container. It might have events on it, etc. So we leave it as an image object, which is really just a container name with a type of image. But inside that, if we ever do want the actual bitmap that, that got loaded, then we ask for the bitmap property, and there it is. Inside that container is indeed the traditional Zim bitmap, the type that you would get if you preload. So if we go through the preloading process and ask for the type, then we would get 
type bitmap. It doesn't do an asset container. It doesn't do an image. Asset containers and images are only when you do not preload, when you lazy load like this. Okay. Um, so when it's complete, we can make our triangle. Darn, did I delete our triangle? No, here it is. Okay. So grab our triangle from here. Now that it's complete, we can make a new bitmap color from the bitmap. Uh, the bitmap is, uh, well, this is the bitmap right here, like so. So that will work just fine. Let's have a look. Missing a round bracket somewhere. Mm -hmm. Bitmap.center, another round bracket there, I think. Okay, we don't. Also, we don't want to put the pattern in yet, but we do need to call the pattern, right? But we won't center the pattern on the stage. We're just going to put the triangle on the page. Now, this is going to ha happen later. We might not see anything. Let's take a look and see if we see nothing. Refresh. Oh, we do see something. I think, yeah, I think we run a stage.update. So when when this comes in, uh, when when we get it, I believe we put the stage.update after the complete, just because we know that we've loaded in this image for us. Therefore, automatically after it's complete, we're going to stage.update. Um, we're going to run this stuff first and then automatically do a stage.update afterwards. Otherwise, we would need the stage.update in here if we were to manually do it. Refresh. Anyway, that's just updating the stage twice, so we don't, don't need to. Neat, huh? So we're able to use the bitmap in there. And what we've just done, just with a, this is, this just came up. And once again, it was sort of like, oh yeah, somebody's saying, gosh, the bitmap color isn't working when we bring in assets this way. Yeah, there might be a variety of little sort of extraneous type things that do not work with an asset when we load it in this manner. Because um, the bitmap color was expecting a bitmap, and yet we just gave it the image container, not the bitmap. So what we've just done, though, is patched Zimcat 3, 2, sorry, Zimcat 2, so that um, it will accept an image object as well. So that works as well. If the pattern is an image object. When we pass that into bitmap color, bitmap color says, oh, is this thing an image object? If it is, then use its bitmap property. So there we go. This will work now as well. Let's make this uh, 100 and see what happens. Refresh here. And there's our triangle. 200, 200, 100 using the bitmap, using actually the image. We're passing that in there. Okay, so there you go. That's a little bit of a history about the bitmap and how we load things. We can go to the lazy loading. There is one more step in all of this, and that is to do with cores. Cores is cross-origin resource sharing. And what we've done, I think this will probably work, is made an image. We haven't, haven't really launched this officially. We're still kind of holding on to it a bit. But this does cores in the background. So if you're having a problem accessing cores, there's a couple of ways that, we've, that we have documented to put in a no cores in, in, up in here when we load in the images. There's a couple of ways that we can handle cores, cross-origin resource sharing up, up here properly. But what we've done recently is done just like the asset, but done the cross-origin resource sharing and made it work out just like that. So we call that image. So if we use image and pass in that, it should get by cores and loading. So wow, neat, huh? However, it does load in behind. It loads our cores server, and that doesn't seem to work. It may not have a complete. Uh, let's see if the, is the complete working. Oop. Oh, desktop reveal. Back, back to here in F12. Yeah, we are getting the complete, but the image, ah, okay. The image must be, maybe it pulls a different type. What type did it say? Pattern, oh, desktop reveal again, sorry about that. It says it's an image and it's got a bitmap. Oh, but I am seeing it, it is working. Stage.update maybe didn't work. Refresh. Yeah, okay, it looks like the stage.update didn't work. Okay, interesting. So bringing in the image when it's complete, 
it's not calling a stage.update. I'll have to look into that. Uh, stage.update, stage.update there. So it looks like <laughs> calling it calling it with a um, uh, the asset there does it, but not when we call it with the image. So it is working just fine. It's just we needed the stage dot okay. Okay, good. So like I said, that would that would handle cores, and that's kind of the last step. There's a variety of other things to do with bringing in assets, but you can check out the docs for for assets. There's a new multi-path asset. As, as, it, as it stands right now, it looks like we can only have one path. We pass in one path. And therefore, all of our assets, whether that be sound or images or fonts, uh, JSON files, whatever, we would put in the same assets directory. But if you wanted to separate those into different directories, we now have the Zim multi-path uh, multi tool, an asset multi path asset, <laughs> multi-path asset object, and that allows you to specify different paths in there. Alrighty, well, uh, why don't we leave it at that? This has been a Zim Explorer, and I am Dr. Abstract. It's been fun talking to you about various images. All the best. Hopefully that, that's helpful for um, some of you. Woohoo! Come on in to Zim at ZimJS.com or join us on Slack, ZimJS.com slash Slack. We would love to have you there. Take it easy. Ciao.